Aloha everybody and welcome to part 17 and we just found ourselves into a big giant beehive where um, I don't think we're welcome because Grunty's ordered these buzzes or these zubbas, whatever. To protect the jiggy! Oh god! Now you can do it the hard way like I'm doing and just like constantly pecking and somersaulting and they'll always try charging for you and stuff like that and you can take some damage. Although, one quick way to end this like five seconds just activate Golden Feathers and stand there, and they'll keep running into your invulnerability wings and dying, and it's super easy that way, but uh, I didn't want to waste my Golden Feathers because I was paranoid I would need them later and stuff, so uh, yeah. I was just showing you how the badasses do it, how the manly guys do it. <laughs> I have so many muscles you don't even know. But we're back in Click Clock Wood, Summer Edition. And we're not even at fall or winter yet. Like I said, guys, this is a giant world. But, uh, you know, I like it. It's, it's atmospheric, it's special. Here's one jiggy I don't like, though. As the seasons keep going and going, this house keeps getting built more and more. So when we were here in spring, it was like kind of open, it didn't have a roof or anything. But when you go in here in summer, there's no floor. There's a little bit of floorboards, but not everywhere. And oh, there's a Jiggy over there. Of course there's a Jiggy over there. Now when you're getting to it, it's not so bad. Just hold up and left diagonally, make a good jump, and booyah, there you go. The problem is getting back. If you screw up this jump, you can easily find yourself falling down and dying. And, uh, well, not dying, but at least falling all the way to the bottom. Well, it depends on your health, really. Because if your health is low and you make a gigantic drop, oh, yeah, it's going to hurt. Go figure. A huge drop from this size. That's going to hurt. So, uh, that jump can be a little bit awkward. I'm not going to lie. Sometimes the platforming in Banjo-Kazooie can be a little iffy. But, hey. Ugh. Nerd Nut's eaten too many acorns! They've got none left for next winter now! Well, that's what you get, Nap Nut. What the hell were you thinking? <laughs> Just eat them all and get this big pregnant belly? I mean, come on. Come on, Nap Nut. Still, we have nothing we can do with Nap Nut in this particular season, so once again, he's just there for character development, he's just there for atmosphere setting. Nothing to do with Nap Nut. A reminder, those, na those musical notes I just picked up, you will not find them there in winter or fall, so you really do have to check in every area of every season uh, to find all 100 musical notes, because, you know... And imagine this on the N64, not so much Xbox Live where they were perma-collectible, but this is the N64. I have to do this in one run. If I make a bad trip and I fall and, like, kill myself, I gotta go back to all the seasons I was already in to get those musical notes again. Ugh! It's just, like, awful. How could they do this to me? And yet, there are more than five caterpillars in the area, so I have two left over. But you give them five and Irie grows! And then Irie falls asleep because, you know... Eating and sleeping, that's all this bird is good for. <laughs> but uh, we'll probably see Irie in the fall. And I keep coming to this area every time I end Click Clock Wood because I always feel like there's something up there. Like, maybe there's gonna be like a musical note or something. Uh, but... As I, if I recall, there's really never anything up there. The only time you want to go up there is during spring. Because that's when you'll get a Jinjo and a Jiggy. But, uh... Every time I come up here now, it's just like, oh, claptrap door right, that has nothing in it. I don't know why I went up there, but whatever. I, oh, God! Oh! That's what I'm talking about. It's so easy to hurt yourself in this world. You screw up your jump, you just find yourself falling and breaking all your bones and stuff. That's why you gotta keep an eye out for these bee shacks over here. Because they have honey. But they also have bees who will attack you because you're taking their honey. But if you're fast enough, you can dodge them, so whatever. The bee shacks have always been there since World 1, since Mumbo's Mountain. I haven't really used them too much, but uh, they have been stationed in every other world, and I think in around Gobi's Valley, maybe? They started having bees swarming them. So, you know, just when you get your honey, just be warned. The bees won't like that. They will chase you. Then you gotta dodge them. And that's not fun. 
But now, ladies and gentlemen, we're in the fall, Click Clock Wood. And Irie wants ten caterpillars this time. Well, someone's awfully greedy. <laughs> Although, they do have all these leaves here piled up, so now we can have some big shortcuts to get from one side of the world to the other. So I kind of like that. Keep an eye out. Uh, this world has the most musical notes. Uh, constantly around the tree are musical notes. In the clap trap sections, there are musical notes. So uh, definitely keep an eye out for those. This is why I wanted my invulnerability feathers. Because I wanted to survive the clap traps and not get damaged and stuff. And... Musical notes everywhere in the fall version of Click Clock Wood. Everywhere! Keep an eye out. But in case anyone's antsy for the next uh, playthrough, because, you know, this playthrough's going on quite a bit. Uh, the next one will definitely be Sonic Rivals 2. I promise you that. After Banjo Kazooie, I will be moving on to Sonic Rivals 2, in case you were wondering. But, you know. So, yeah, you definitely have to go into Mumbo's hut in the fall because musical notes are in here. You need them. He's too busy raking leaves to transform you into some kind of animal. Does that mean Mum. Like, how does this even work? Mumbo lives in, like, 20 different places at once. And apparently in Cluck Clock Wood, he's staying here, too, because... I don't know. <laughs> if I think too much about this Banjo-Kazooie cartoony world, none of it makes sense. I don't know how it works, but whatever. Only in this game will you have frog sounds as part of the soundtrack. <laughs> and I love it! Anywho, to across from the river here, the plant is there again, and uh, so is Gobi, that poor innocent little camel from Gobi's Valley. As you can expect, we're going to uh, do what we always do and hit him in the back! I mean, seriously, that's just overkill, Banjo. You've hit him like five times this whole game. What a dick! <laughs> okay, it's four times actually, but still. Right, that's it! I'm off to the lava world! You'll never find me there! Fuck this game! <laughs> Aw oh man, Samuel Jackson's gone. Because I called him that in the last part. Did you watch the last part? Pay attention! <laughs> uh, that is for sure, for definitely, the last appearance of Gobi. He said he's going off to the lava world. Uh, well, we're on the last world, so we're not going to find him there. And, uh, you know. Maybe people who play Banjo-Tooie will see him once again. Maybe. I, no, no, I screwed it up! It doesn't matter, I have to go in here anyway. Because, now that the water's back, I can swim up to the area where Naughty's home is and get my reward for helping him get inside his house back in summer. There you are. Oh, here you are at last. I've been waiting our months to... I've been waiting months to give you this. I know how you feel, Naughty. I got a gift I bought someone for their birthday and they still haven't picked it up yet. It's crazy. It's crazy! <laughs> and a side note, I really like Naughty's Homes theme song. I don't know why there's something about that theme song. Again, I love the fact that the music's constantly adapting and changing. Like, even though we have, like, fall click clock wood, which is different from spring and summer click clock wood, and it's like... You go into Naughty's house, and Naughty's house changes, and the music adapts, and it's just, ah, oh, it's so great, it's so great. How can anyone not like this game? Ah, it's a bit collecty. The musical note thing, I can get that, but still. Maybe they're not into the furry animals. I mean, I'm not a, f I, uh, that came out wrong. <laughs> Maybe they don't like Kitty entertainment. Children like entertainment with colorful animal creatures. That's what I meant.
But anywho, Irie still needs 10 caterpillars, so again, keep an eye out for those. I'm only missing one at this point. Uh, the flower has a jigsaw on it, thanks to Gobi's extra water. So the best way to get onto it, you have to go to where the beehive is, and uh, basically drop from the beehive to the flower. Because during the winter, the flower will not exactly be there anymore. Spoilers! You go into the beehive for four musical notes. That's it. There's nothing else in here, but you definitely have to return. Not only to get this little extra dialogue, like, There's nothing in here for now, now bear. We've all moved out. Screw off. <laughs> but, you know, you need the musical notes, so this is why you have to revisit every area. Again, world's kind of repetitive. You're doing the same thing over and over, multiple times. Visiting the beehive in spring. Visiting in summer. Visiting in fall. You know. But that's okay. It's all good. And at this point I realized, oh wait, I'm supposed to get the jiggy from the flower. So it's like, oop, where am I going? Where am I going? Because this ain't no tool-assisted speedrun. <laughs> this is all based off my memory. This is all my gameplay. Yeah. Sorry for the silence, I, I just, there's really nothing to talk about. <laughs> Again, the thing about having a repetitive world like Click Clock Wood, it's like, you kind of know what I'm going to be doing next. I'm probably going to be visiting the house area. I'm probably going to be visiting Nab Nuts the Squirrel. I'm probably going to be doing this and doing that, and then I'm going to feed the caterpillars to Irie. You know? All these things I've already did, like, twice now. I like the world, I do, but talking about it, can't really do it. Oh look, the house is built at least. Inside is a, you know, a bee shack, but that's about it. Still, I do like that, you know, things are changing. I don't know who's building these walkways, I don't know who's building that house. Oh, by the way, I always wait for the dragonfly to come to me, because sometimes if I make the jump and he charges towards me, I could fall into the pit and break my legs possibly kill myself. So, uh, yeah, I always wait for the dragonfly to come to me. Hi there, bear buddy. I need six more acorns before winter comes. Have you seen any? Uh, no. You're fucked. See ya. <laughs> oh, I'm sure he has a jiggy, so I gotta help him. This walkway takes you to a window, which you can bust into. There's an acorn in here. All six acorns are basically around nap nuts. So if he was any kind of a talented platformer who had any kind of skill in breaking windows or something, you'd think that maybe he could get the acorns, but uh, no, nah, he's too lazy to do that. Can't do it. Kind of selfish, Nabby. Actually, that's something I haven't seen in, like, years. I don't remember, because I think I saw it when I was, like, 8 or something. No, this game came out when I was 10. But the first time I played it, I think I moved on to the Winter World without giving Nabnuts his acorns. But I don't remember what happens. Maybe people in the comments section could tell me what happens if you don't get the acorns and then you go to Winter. What happens to what's ha what happens to to nab nuts? Either way, there was an acorn in his goddamn house. <laughs> he really couldn't find an acorn in your house, you lazy piece of shit squirrel. Come on, come on. As I was saying, I don't know who's building the house and the the planks and stuff here, but uh, they got some good you know worksmanship. They're making these these platforms just hang out. You'd think this thing would be hanging like downwards and stuff, but no, it's, it's totally straight and flat. That's awesome. Video games. 
You gotta be a talent trot for this section because if you're not, Banjo will just slide off and he will break his back. So uh, just make sure you're definitely talent trotting when you're getting these acorns. It can be a little bit tricky, but hey, that's how the the acorn corns. <laughs> I don't know. I was gonna say cookie crumbles, but I thought I say that all too. I say that way too much. I say that more than. But I digress. Because, but I digress, is my catchphrase. It's my catchphrase, and I did not steal it from, you know, the English language. Because when you hear, but I digress, in a movie or a cartoon, oh, they owe me money. Because I came up with that phrase, and it was not part of the English language before me. Yes. Just saying. And anyway, we have ten... Oh, oh God! Oh! I hate that, the camera! <laughs> I could have fallen, and then I'd have to reclimb the whole damn tree all over again. There's no, like, fences to keep Banjo boxed in. You make a wrong step, you're falling! It's so tense! It makes my heart jump out of my chest! I don't want a heart attack. <laughs> I don't need a heart attack right now. Anyway, Irie's getting bigger and bigger and hungrier and hungrier, and you give him ten caterpillars. These poor innocent caterpillars who have eyes, and you can tell that they're creatures too. But as Leon from Resident Evil 4 would remind us, insect lives are nothing compared to human lives. But I don't know what they are compared to eagle lives. But, uh... Irie soon be Big Bird, but now he just needs to sleep. So maybe we'll see him again in the winter, and maybe he'll be a Big Bird. Not of the yellow variety, the one who sings songs and learns you how to... who teaches you how to learn the alphabet. But he'll be a different kind of Big Bird, you know? So at this point I'm just checking, because once again, I always feel like there's something at the very top. This time there's a caterpillar, but I don't need that since I had ten before I got here. And a Mumbo Token, which again, I don't need, so again, really pointless to go up there. If any viewers are, you know, gonna play Click Clock Wood, you don't need to climb to the top area, unless it's spring. Hey, oh, come on! How'd I hurt my legs there? That wasn't that big a drop. I call bullshit game! Bullshit! Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, we'll be going on to the last season, Winter Click Clock Wood, in Part 18. See you then.